what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we have a safe word, we will not stop. This is Jason Routes, and welcome to the Safe Word Podcast on the show today. Richard, is there a middle initial? An initial? T. Richie T. Allen, <laughs> from originally from Stony Creek, and um, dude, I don't even know where to start. I had like on you uh, as a short list on uh, for a guest for my show for I don't know. I had a kind of like some boxes of uh, of timelines in my life, and um, you know, skateboarding had it was seasonal, and there were certain uh, uh, tribes of of skateboarders from the east end to the west end and the mountain and etc. that would all kind of congregate at this park in downtown Hamilton called Beasley Park, which was actually a park, which now is a skate park. When we were there, it had, um, it was a pool for kids. It was a little wading pool for kids. And um, when I was 15, I, I was uh, uh, cast out to the streets of Hamilton, and I went to uh, live, live with my aunt for a short time in Stony Creek on uh, Margaret Avenue on Highway 8 there. And I'd have to skate from that corner from the McDonald's over to Fiesta Mall. And as I started to go from my aunt's place to Fiesta Mall to catch the bus to go back downtown to be with the savages, I'd see, like, skate curbs, some wax curb, a little... There was there was fingerprints. Of, okay, there's some skaters around. Yeah. I could see, okay, oh, these guys... Oh, this is a long grinding curb. So, somebody's been rocking this corner. But where are these motherfuckers? I'm getting thrown <laughs> eggs at me by the local Italian community. Because I'm the only white kid in the neighborhood who has a gra- uh, gravel di- uh, driveway. And uh, so I'm going back and forth from Margaret Avenue to Fiesta Mall, catch the bus downtown. And then I'd see kids around the bus stop. But you know as well as I do, we were talking about this earlier, that uh, the kids that were in downtown Hamilton were savages. Oh, yeah. No. It, <laughs> savages. Say, coming from... Uh, Coming from Stony Creek in the suburbs, yeah. and like it was a big deal if you went to skate down at Beasley. And I was like, just kind of, I was younger than you, so I wasn't really that good yet. And I was like, mm-hmm. pretty scared to go down there. Yeah, no, those kids were absolutely savages. Uh, yeah, it was definitely. Well, you guys, you're, you know, your 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 mother would like iron your pants and shit, and you know, <laughs> those kids were in track pants for like a month yeah. with no underwear. <laughs> Skating and work boots <laughs> with open sores on their faces. It was it was definitely uh, you could tell you could tell when kids showed up from different parts of the city. You guys just stunk of Stony Creek. Oh, for sure. You know, <laughs> I just had like a board. I had you know probably a Powell Peralta T shirt, which was yeah. probably. Zero street it credibility. It could have been a Hanson shirt. It might as well. Exactly. <laughs> you may as well have a Hanson shirt on. So you roll up the Beasley with that on, you're, somebody's going to say something to you. Yeah. And it was, you hope that you catch that. They're really not being yeah. next to you. <laughs> I couldn't skate out of that part of the, the city quick enough. I needed to be downtown. Yeah. I needed to be around the savages. Um, it, and it, again, you never knew. that That was like a hub for like high risk. Danger. It was a dangerous place because people would come in. The sidewalks would lead in from all the yeah. all directions, so you could quickly be cornered in that uh, in that place 
very quickly. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> Good Shepherd nearby, and whatever transient was wandering through. You that's right. Was there was a shelter happen. right by there. Club, so you Club had, Shep. That's what we called it yeah. after the the DJ. The, yeah, that's right. The um, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, Chris Shepherd was a big house DJ yeah. in Canada, <laughs> and then we DJed it up with the a men's shelter for. Um, yeah, there, there were, and then there was the trees and the junkies. Scott used to piss in the bottles, their whiskey bottles, a lot. Yeah, and I think <laughs> we like, all. Sorry, we all pissed in their whiskey bottles a lot. <laughs> there were bums down there, and they were a real pain in the ass because some of them you'd kind of build some familiarity with them, and they, there would be some respect of boundaries. Yeah, and then these fuckers would get shit corked, wasted. And start freaking fights with savages. Yeah. Lord of the flies. So those guys got stomped out. I've seen a lot of grown men get beat up by a swarm of kid, children. Essentially, yeah. 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 <laughs> because we literally probably all look young for our age and mm-hmm. literally look like kids. And Yeah, but you didn't walk into the middle of Beasley Park and start shit with no. the skaters that was a horrible no. idea no no it was that was and and even guys that weren't even your friends all of a sudden would all bond together to defend <laughs> one guy they hated this guy right <laughs> fuck you we only beat him yeah, you know exactly. there's none of that so what what year are we talking here so what is this 90 uh, or sorry 89 that's what i'm thinking 89 was the first year i ever went to beasley yeah, yeah. i think around 89 and then uh but yeah, we started uh, to discover some little skate spots. Is the Swish LA even there? Is it's, it a thing? They tore it down. It's yeah. I think there is a Swish LA there, but the original building and the banks, those are all. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they kind of shifted over the lot. It was on a huge yeah, uh, yeah. Gulliver's Travel style yeah. lot. You know, <laughs> just like how many acres for a pie and coffee shop? You yeah. Know? You just had the luxury of, you know, Years earlier, these were all orchards. There's, you know, you'd see remnants of that in certain parts of the city, but it was cherry trees for like a hundred miles. You know? Oh, for sure. Apples and uh, with Edie Smith, I think was a cannery. Yeah. Big, Don't big business. So we were on the. Uh, is it the? It's the green belt. Is yeah, that what we're is, kind of on the edge of it? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So we always had that. Uh, um, you know, there was always apples at the house. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Every kid had fucking apples. Peaches in August. Yeah. Right? Oh, the Winona Peach Festival. I got my first STD there on a Ferris wheel <laughs> from a carny with a hook for a hand named Marjorie. <laughs> she used to shit with the door open and pull her lip down with a hook like she was trying to be sexy. She'd go, yeah, <laughs> through a toe ring. But anyway, I'm. Um, we're here now. As much as uh, there's all this nostalgia to catch up on, what's happening outside? <laughs> Fuck. I had a whole tour booked. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's like you said about when this all started, it's some Mad Max shit going down. Yeah. That's kind of how it feels. It like, totally. It's hard to watch the news. I am right not now. blowing anybody for gasoline, I'll tell you that. That's why I never <laughs> learned how to drive a car. I'm like, I'll take the long road, the yeah. footpath with the crossbow and the coyote. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I've still never driven a car. No. No. Wow. I've never had a license or You've driven a car. Managed very well. Yeah, I did pretty good. You know, as yeah. somebody who's who's had to commute quite a few places, and uh, the, um, you know, I remember reading old, um, uh, was it Chris Miller and uh, um, Tommy Guerrero were talking about street skating, and they they didn't want to. Um, Get driver's license because it would affect their street skating. It makes sense. So I, I didn't want to get a car because I didn't want to turn into a fan ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it's so true. Like if yeah. you're pulling your luggage around and planes, trains, and automobiles, you're you know that if you want a pleasant travel time, that you need to be in relatively decent shape. Fat people on airplanes are the biggest fucking pain in the ass, and they're so irritable and whiny. Yeah. They're well, just... Because they're uncomfortable the whole time. You can barely fit... Like, I'm a skinny dude, mm. and last time I was on a plane, I'm like, oh, I, I just barely fit in here. Yeah. Like, if you're any larger... Oh, fuck. Look. Yeah, if you're over 200 pounds. That's why I love it. I'm, I, I got, like, the ass of a golden retriever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or a, a greyhound on all fours. Yeah. Uh, so... 
I, I don't mind sitting next to giant people because I put a blanket on them and then use them as oh, like a warm yeah. bed. I did that from Toronto to Johannesburg, <laughs> but I knew the guy, my buddy Angelo. Oh, okay. <laughs> giant human being, and uh, he turned into my hot water bottle for the whole trip. Oh. It was great. And the lady, I kept telling her I was dying and I needed more peanuts. <laughs> uh, I think I was trying to commit suicide because I had a pe- Anyway, it was a long flight and I went crazy. Like, really? after eight hours of travel time in the air, you start to go, what is going on? Are we just on a string in the sky? Yeah. Because I don't really feel... Uh, am I going to have a birthday here? I flew back from Germany a couple of years ago. And yeah, it's like I flew there in six hours, flying back eight hours. I'm like, oh my God. And there's, you know, they got the little map there. I'm over top of Iceland. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't why am I over Iceland right now? <laughs> like, but I guess they do. That makes the flight a little shorter or something. Mm-hmm. Like eight hours, whew, I was done. Yeah, for plus sure. I guess like wind currents and kind of like, I think that the atmosphere has almost like a, a water current to it. So yeah, I guess flight so, patterns yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Plus, I think in some countries, I know some countries, they don't give a fuck about the people. Their flight patterns are like right over the city. Oh, really? Two inches from the house, like wow. somewhere in Mexico or somewhere. People are throwing livestock out the window as they're coming <laughs> over your house. Like It's just crazy. Wow. Hearts are falling off into your living room. Donnie Darko style. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um but Germany, how was that? That's been on my list. Never been. Yeah, I flew. Uh, actually, I flew to Switzerland and then drove to like this area. Germany. I was supposed to be there June 25th in Geneva. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. it was Zurich that I flew into. And I was just next to um, Basel, Switzerland, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful city. Yeah. And I was in the German town. Just how was your exchange? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> yeah. I know. We were like. Yeah, Switzerland might be one of the worst places well, to exchange your money. It was for work and like, yeah. you know, a few of us that had traveled over were like, okay, how much money, how much cash you got? Let's see if we can open a Swiss bank account. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think that they, uh, they'll let you just walk in there. Oh, yeah. But, a cocaine bill hanging out of your uh, nose. Hey, yeah, you guys can hold my money. But yeah, it's beautiful. Like, I mean, people are so nice over there. Yeah. Like, Germans are wonderful people, at least the ones that I met. Yeah. They're just very kind and welcoming. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's cool. I, I, I've had a, a romantic idea uh, about living in Germany or Poland for, like, Krakow, Poland, or, like... Yeah. Uh, you know, Berlin, but I'd like to see a couple other spots. I think and just live there for, like, in Germany for, like, a month. Yeah, that would be cool. You know what I mean? And do, like, maybe do half a month in Germany, half a month in Poland or something like that. Yeah, that would be cool. Krakow, I heard, is fucking amazing. Really, eh? And I like girls with big, fat, round asses. Wow, that's a bonus. Though. Yeah, right? You a got big that. fucking ass. <laughs> a fuck ass. Not those fucking chicken skins and broom handle asses. I'm Br- talking British a, asses. You mean. A big dump truck. I live. Are your parents British? My dad was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what part of Britain? Manchester. Oh shit. Yeah. Well, my grandfather's from Grimsby. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. So yeah. It's in the same area, Lancashire. Yeah. Is that what they would call it? Grimsby is a uh, a fishing town. It's like shit. Well, it's a shit town. Yeah. Manchester's rad though. I had a guy attack me. It's where uh, a well-known comedian. Jim Jeffries got his face smacked in by a, a, a local mank. Really? Yeah. <laughs> mank? Yeah, they call them manks. Oh, really? Yeah. From Manchester. Oh, yeah, yeah. A I mank. guess, yeah. Mank. He's a fucking mank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want chips in you? That's a terrible... <laughs> but, Are they fucking... No, I yeah. just lose it. fucking... I think it's a completely different language. Like, you can't understand. Their slang is so... Uh, oh, yeah, but, yeah, totally. But you know from just the little travel that... Uh, you hang, if I, you're hanging out... In Liverpool for a month, you'd have a bit of a Scouse accent after about a year. Yeah, you'd have you start using some of their slang. Oh, for sure. Just for communication things. Yeah, and it's fun to kind of play around with words that you're not used to using in your vocabulary. Yeah, exactly. Like cunt is uh, move right up to the front of the list for me. It's it's, a showstopper, and it's probably their top swear word. Okay, and it's not considered a swear word. No, it's a uh, uh, um, it's a poem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no uh, no. There's, I think Fanny is probably a more aggressive word really? than cunt. 
Wow. Uh, you're a fucking fanny, mate. Oh, man. A fanny. Them's fighting words. That's right, right? <laughs> you could call cunts, people cunts all day. But, um, yeah, that's that's a... Um, when did your uh, father... Did he immigrate here from England? Yeah, 53. So my dad lived there when it was not nice. Like, I mean, he no, lived through... No, when it was Irish. He lived there through the Depression and then World War II. Yeah. And, I yeah, wonder... And I, 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 you probably have a... From what you just said, you probably have a little more grasp of history in, in the timeline, but... My grandfather moved here from Grimsby when he was 15 or wow. maybe younger. Okay. Maybe younger, maybe 14 years old. They yeah, was yeah. just kind of put on a boat, I guess, right? They yeah, were, oh, yeah, you would have had to take a boat. Oh, what yeah. the fuck is that? How long is a boat ride in the 50s? I think it was from, a week. I think it was a week. A week? Yeah. So I know 15 my, my dad, on a boat. That's how my dad came uh, out. And he was 23. Excuse me, miss, but my bucket's full I and know, there's I blood know. everywhere. Can we get more? Can we get some hand wipes? My dad said that he was seasick a good portion of that week because he said once you get out in those ocean swells, he's like that boat is just rocking. So not to mention that boat is very highly sinkable boat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like think about that. I think a modern day paddle boat is probably more buoyant than a boat in the fifties. Yeah. I mean, uh, you got to think that that boat is probably 20 years older. Oh, probably. So you got a 1930s ship that's it's still got puke from pirates from two years <laughs> earlier on the fucking deck. And you're a kid sleeping in, I guess, in a rope bed hanging from the ceiling or probably. something. Probably. That's swinging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And not to mention... How many fucking sex offenders, rapists, gamblers, you know, people that are running from the law? Yeah, for sure. You're fucking, you're, you're, it, the black is a new orange would be a spa. Or orange is a new black. Anyway, I'm going to watch the first season. Kicked out of boy. Ireland for stealing horses on yeah. the run. <laughs> that, I bet you that, as we chuckle about that, there was probably a bunch of those guys. For sure. They were like, sure. dude, they because they, what is that, death? Oh, probably, yeah. You don't so, fuck with a man's horse. I'm on my way to Boston to become a cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, I was very proud. My grandmother's from uh, Cork, uh, Ireland. Oh, okay. So both of those, you know, I know the British wouldn't really give a fuck, but I kind of had a high hopes for Ireland, and they couldn't give even more of a fuck. Yeah. They told me, the man told me flat out, everybody's grandmother's from Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> right to my face. He goes, all right, all right, what am I going to do? Oh, man. Yeah. And I couldn't understand Belfast. You want to talk about an un... Uh, uh, I go, I told the guy, I go, listen, man, I'm so sorry. I know you're smiling and you're telling me something really nice. I can feel it. Yeah. But I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. <laughs> I really can't even. And then he calls over his friend as a translator who's another local Belfastian. Yeah. <laughs> and he's more worse. Wow. He looked like he was talking into a cup. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck these guys were talking about. Anyway, we got fucking hammered. It was on a Wednesday in an old church in Belfast called the Empire. Wow. And it was like, I walked in and I'm like, my friend tells me that um, I got you a gig in, in on Wednesday. And I've been in London for maybe three days. I'm like, I'm fucking in. I'm doing it, man. Yeah, this is happening. I'm in fucking uh, anarchy in the UK. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Jason Rouse taking over fucking Europe and tells me that I got to get to Stansted Airport in the morning. And I'm like, airport? He goes, yeah, yeah, it's in, it's in Belfast and on a Wednesday. So I thought, fuck, man, no one's doing anything on a Wednesday. I'm going to spend 10 hours in train, airport, train, but to do, fly, cab, taxi, do the show. Yeah, it's a day leave. on. It's, right it's, 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 it's going to be a, a long travel for Wednesday for 30 people. Yeah. Get there. There's like 600 people ran in this church and 400 of them are probably standing. What? And I'm like, oh, no. Now, I've, now I'm, I think I've overextended myself because now I'm looking at like potentially... 400 angry Irish people that are just standing with a, a, a board. Uh. This, could go, this could go terribly wrong. And I started off in a worst case scenario. Dumb dumb over here. Nice to be here in the UK. <laughs> I established I was yeah, a fucking dumb dumb. Dumb dumb. Dumb dumb. I'm looking there. I'm with a Glaswegian comic. Um, and he's showing me all the murals. I never seen militarized uh, police vehicles before in the street. Oh yeah, like 
like mountain bikes that say police on the side, just h- hanging out all the uh, IRA uh, murals. Wow. Everybody's ball. I'm like, how can you put a mural up where everyone has a, a balaclava? Yeah. Like, what? Well, I, I, I've yeah, never yeah. seen anything like that. Yeah. I've never seen it straight up. No, it's. Fucking boom. That's we, crazy. we got guns and masks, and this is uh, next to the school. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, um, the, there was, you know, they used to have, I talked, you know, got pretty friendly with the locals and started chatting up the, uh, people that worked at the staff there and they said yeah they used to have an armed guard at the door of the hotel and stuff and wow just two years earlier um and what have you this is this is going back probably 15 years now i guess wow 15, 20 years 20 years so yeah anyway. the wounds were still fresh because the 80s and 90s were you know the ira was quite active and it's yeah a scary place so 20 to years ago yeah yeah i yeah. don't know what what the uh uh how much of that has subsided i think a lot of people have had to really um change a uh up their causes yeah and more recent oh for sure i think a lot of people have had to shelf some of their own bullshit yeah and um and um deal with something that has has initially was very faceless yeah it was very boogeyman it was very um um you know just like Putting blood on your door so the fucking evil doesn't get in. Yeah. You know, this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I have I left Los Angeles just over a month ago. What day is it, third? Uh, it's fourth today. Fourth today. Yeah. So a month and four days, I fled Hollywood. <laughs> and, look <laughs> and at the look at the past week. It's been It's insane. crazy. It's crazy. Anybody who's had their head up the ass... Uh, as they're they're burning the city to the ground, there's like police cars on fire. Um, not to mention, I'm getting a lot of the comedians. Not a lot. There's a handful of comedians that are really kind of upfront. Uh, Alex Jones type. Uh, uh, we'll call them conspiracy theorists or whatever. Yeah. And the uh, the information that I'm seeing via them. Uh, keep in mind, these are comedians of like. Shots of bricks piled up in front of buildings with no construction around. Yeah. The cops are, like, puncturing water bottles and, and bleeding out the water supplies for the protesters. So really? they're dehydrating and stuff. I saw some guy get dragged under a car. They're shooting people in the streets. It looks like Attacking the purge. Attacking journalists? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Australian yeah. lady got smashed in the face or something like a that. A lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Going on. Yeah, it's, it's really... Um, uh, it's over the border. Because as we know here, we're only dealing with this thing, the virus. Yeah. And, and, um, and being Canadian. Right? Being Canadian. It's very, uh, was it Craig Campbell? I don't know if it's his joke or not. He goes, uh, how do you get 100 Canadians out of a swimming pool? How? Can everyone get out of the pool? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. He it's... goes, uh, you know, Americans, you'd have to drain it. Yeah. You'd have to empty out all the water. <sighs> Fuck you. We're on holiday. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. It shows, yeah. That's a kind of a mentality. Um, it's not sheepish. It's like. Um, <laughs> we're polite. We're polite like that. Almost to a fault, I think. Yeah. It could be a gift and a curse. I'll take that over being the guy who's standing in an empty pool because he won't leave. Exactly. Right. Because nobody likes that guy. Unless. Unless I was naked and unconscious, I'd be happy well, they drained the pool. Yeah, you'd have a reasonable excuse then, right? <laughs> and you, you're dealing with this, and you got like three other people you got to keep alive. Yeah, yeah. So it's, but I mean, it's been tough on the kids, like having no school. Yeah. As much as like the kids might just say, "Oh yeah, I hate school." Yeah. It's really the social and the structured day. Like kids thrive on that, right? Of course. And Look so what happens to a baby that you don't pick up. Yeah. They need that stimulation so they know how to do problem solving. Yeah. With real people. And it as this has dragged on, it's gotten tougher. Uh, both my wife and I were working. Yeah. So we're trying to deal with work and take care of the yeah. kids. Homeschool, pff, I've given up. Like, yeah. you, you need that structured day for kids to learn. Mm-hmm. Hanging out at home, that's not happening. No. So. And there's ways to slip in a little education here and there, you know. Yeah. But again, this is a, there's a lot of trauma hanging over these kids with the absence of their friends. Yeah. You know, the, now you can't even... Don't touch! Yeah. You can't... What? What? What do you mean? No, 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 no. There's no touching anymore. Yeah. What do you mean? I thought we were doing this. 
we, we you told me that the government is gonna and we're gonna have all the, like there's, you, this has been going on for a hundred years. Why are we stopping now? Yeah, I, I can't explain it. No, I don't even know what the fuck. I don't even <laughs> know what to tell you tomorrow. I don't have any answers. There's a lot of the hands in the air. Yeah, with people just kind of like. You know, I have friends that are very, very professional, uh, 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 hardworking people that um, are at a, uh, not even at a crossroads. They're at a bus stop waiting Ugh. for someone to come up to pick them up. Not, wow. not, not uh, uh, metaphorically yeah, at a yeah. bus stop. Yeah. They're just kind of like, they're not, they're not, a, um, they're, they're fucked. They're really fucked. I can see it in their voice. People that spoke with so much more confidence and, and direction now because there's so much uncertainty. Um, people are trying to make plan tomorrow or something. Uh, like we were laughing uh, on the way over here about the aliens waiting to go on next. You <laughs> yeah. know? It's, it's at that point. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's so much upheaval and uh, this system is just folded under itself. In the United States now, Canadians, I um, I've been kind of poking in on it, but it looks like business as usual, with the uh, exception of this viral thing. Yeah, I mean, I think Canadians were not as polarized as they are in the U.S. Right? Like, I mean, you've got a president that I think to him he's a he's a sociopath and he just cares about winning. Like, it's very binary to him. It's either I win or I lose, yeah. and everything in his life is measured that way. Mm-hmm. So. You know, he's he's just polarizing, the, just poking the left as much as he can. And then the left is getting more polarized, right? So I'm sure you even see it. Like, with your comedy routine, you probably get lefties, far lefties coming to your show. And, well, I didn't like the way he spoke. Like, Bunch you know, of, yeah, uh, I really noticed something 10 years ago. Oddly enough, when I first moved to Los Angeles, um, I moved to New York first. Mm-hmm. And this, quote... Mm-hmm hipster movement was kind of just starting off you know yeah. skinny guys with beards drinking organic coffee with chicks that don't shave their armpits yeah fine i've seen it once already in, in a generation <laughs> so you're not really doing anything that new nothing new but uh something else there was something that had changed like the guys that used to embody that kind of uniform were guys that actually were outdoors mint <laughs> really? right, they were fishermen at yeah. one time. They look like the kids now look like uh, 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 manicured fishermen. Yeah, <laughs> you know the, all the flannels and, yeah. and stuff. I go. Most of these guys look half of the Canadian guys I knew in the eighties. Yeah. yeah. So you know, a farmers hats. You know, and all this this fashionable. Uh, uh, anyway, so these guys, the girls would be. Maybe it wasn't their cup of tea. Yeah. They would make them a squirm. The guy would acknowledge that and go, come on, honey, let's go. Yeah. Just in hopes that he might get a fucking pity blow job. Yes. Because he <laughs> popped a fucking zit on her neck. Yeah. You fucking bitch. <laughs> I hate her. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's those things though. Like everybody's that polarized and then you get a pandemic. It hasn't really been handled well because mm-hmm. it's been polarized. Yeah. You know, wearing a face mask is a political statement. Yeah. I'm like, that makes no sense to me. Hey, we're, a black box is a political statement. Yeah. So it's there. That's the point. Right. And then you just get this powder keg uh, race issue thrown in top of it. And now you've got a country tearing itself apart. It's sad, man. Yeah, it's really sad. I've been pondering that. And it's like, it's kind of like it's your neighbor cutting himself. Yeah, it literally is. It looks is. like your neighbor cutting, like a, a crazy neighbor that's beating his wife. Yeah. And uh, and all you can hear is the slapping. There's nothing you can do about it. That's... Except masturbate, <laughs> bang your head against the wall and go, you <laughs> fucking idiots want to keep it down? We're over here trying to beat off. <laughs> if I go last, I got to eat the cracker. <laughs> this hockey team sucks. That's what happens. I never played hockey for that reason. <laughs> I heard those guys used to beat off on crackers, and the last guy to come would have to eat the cracker. Oh. These are hockey players. Why? That's because they're, they're, they're from Sault Ste. Marie, and their name's Boomer. Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> That's my buddy. He ate cum soaked crackers. The gaper, everybody. Follow him on Instagram, boomerphillips.com, and go, hey, man, 
Why did you eat that cum soaked cracker? You clearly took long on purpose. <laughs> He's not even hard yet, everybody. He's going slow on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Last guy to blow eats it. Oh, and it just smells like an asparagus farm in there. Oh. In a sauna. I know, I know. They make me hold the cracker with a dish glove. Oh. And my wrist gets heavy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember when I shit on Paul's wrist at that bush or that warehouse party? I don't remember I, that. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Poor Paul Cook. Yeah. Oh, man. So, so <laughs> it was out of hand. You know, remember, I, I used to shit outside all the time. I remember that. <laughs> yes. I do remember. And I always just like, where does all this shit come from? Because it seemed like you were always ready. You know? I was so, because I'd hold on to it for days until my breath started to You're like, stay. Oh, and I'm going to see crowded. Paul on Friday night, so I'm saving it. <laughs> I'm just literally saving my dumps. I'm like, we got to get to the party. And they're like, why? It's too early. I'm like, no, now, because I'm gonna shit. Because you guys had a shit and piss jar too, didn't you? I had a shit and piss jar. I remember. I that. left it on some girl's doorstep <laughs> on Christmas. On Christmas. Yeah, me and Paul wow. dropped it off. And you guys, that took a while for you guys. To oh, get it was that full going. of everything. Used condoms, hot dogs, puke, shit, blood, cum, and it was a, a cocktail. I kept it like a lava lamp with a flashlight behind it in my bedroom. Wow. And uh, my mother freaked. <laughs> my mother lost it. What Which, the fuck is that? I never heard my mother curse before. <laughs> and she goes, is that a fucking condom? I go, yeah, those are your, all your grandkids in a fucking mason jar full of fucking puke and vomit. I go, that's where I feel about recycling. <laughs> I felt like singing a White Lion song. <laughs> when the children cry... I don't remember. 80s hair metal. <laughs> but yeah, I had a shit and piss jar forever. I used to make them put bugs in them, and I was going through all kinds of things. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I shit. Um, warehouse party, loading docks. They opened up the metal door because the, the party was filling up. And I started walking backwards <laughs> as the door was opening up and pissing off the end of the, the loading dock. Oh, my God. So as I'm pissing... Uh, Paul and Troy run up beside me and pretend they're washing their faces in my <laughs> urine stream. So it goes from laughing to panic. Well, I start laughing because I'm looking around. All these girls who weren't going to fuck me anyway are <laughs> angry now because I've set in blatant disrespect for their... Uh, I'm not appeasing to them. I, I made myself unfuckable in like two seconds. At this party where there's tons of hot girls and I should be focused on something else. But I wasn't. I want, I want to have a ha-ha. No. So I'm peeing backwards. I've got my dick pushed between my legs and I'm pissing. And I'm laughing and Paul and, and Troy are splashing this urine up, pretending. They couldn't see from the back. So people thought they were really washing their faces in my piss. Oh, man. And I laugh and I fart and a log shoots out and lands on Paul's wrist. <laughs> And people start screaming, and I'm laughing, and more shit's pouring out of my ass as I'm laughing, and I'm hunched over, and I'm shitting, I'm shitting, and people are like, no, no, you couldn't, people, bleh. Paul takes his arm and wipes it down, puts a huge shit stain down my back. Oh. So later on, I got flies on my shirt, I'm trying to talk to girls at this party, and they go, aren't you the guy with this shit everywhere? No, no, that's not me, darling. <laughs> I would have a glass of Chardonnay for the lady. Oh, there's more flies again. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was uh, multiple wow. dumps, yeah. Yeah, and I, then on your birthday, well, how old were you, 20? 23. 23. That was my 23rd birthday, I remember. So is that, that's almost a half a lifetime, more than a half a lifetime ago. Yeah. Fuck, I don't feel old. I do. Do you? <laughs> no, not really. Like you I, got, I saw a scar on your arm. You've had a surgery. Skateboarding? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that was like pre-skateboarding. That was oh, when I was okay. young, but yeah, yeah. I still skate. Yeah. Like, I still get out. Not as often as I'd like to, but at least, you know, once a month, I try to at least force myself out. And, I heard a very, your outs are very, I hear it. The what? The Canadian outs. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, because the the accent, I'm <laughs> yeah. not used to being around. Most that's of the, true, eh? Most of the Canadians, uh, that's true, See, eh? I just yeah, said yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, I'm actually mocked for it wow. in, in California. Yeah. There is, uh, but I'm I'm fine with my A's and a boots. We're talking about um, you know slang and things like that, and um, I don't mind uh, the. Uh, 
it, it affects auditions and stuff sometimes. Yeah. Because they, they want a very distinct really? uh, American accent. You can't be play a New York City cop and you throw an a boat in there. Yeah, it's that's over. True. Yeah. It's over. It's like, asshole's got health care. Get him. <laughs> that's the big thing. They, they, people whisper up to me in, in the States like, you got health care? I'm like, yeah. Oh, no, I in know. In Canada. I've had a lot of conversations with Americans about that. Because, like, the company, I work in the automotive industry, so I'm on the phone with people in Detroit daily. Yeah. And, yeah, they're all, like, spooked about nationalized health care. And I'm like, okay, well, look at it this way. You you pay a premium every month. It's not about that. It's what to, you're going to lose military. Well, God, well, I always That's say, it. You'll, you pay a premium every month to an insurance company. And you know that insurance company is a for-profit business, so they're going to find every way they can not to pay you. Mm-hmm. Or, I, instead of paying insurance, I hand my money to the government in taxes. And yes, we pay more tax here. But, I know if I break my arm, I'm going to be taken care of. <sighs> I don't have to pay for it. Having right? a baby. Having a baby. Having a fucking yeah. baby. I've had two. So, yeah. like Cost you I, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. They just signed the yeah. paper. Right? I've so. got a, a thousand stitches, screws and plates and cuts and bruises. I think I had to pay a deductible on an ambulance ride. Yeah, I think you might have. And I was ambulance. fucked off about it at the time <laughs> because I was in my te- 20, tweens. And then I was, I remember it was like 120 bucks or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, just a lot of money when you're, 16, yeah, yeah. Right? But I was like, I had about $30,000 worth of steel and surgical, uh, uh, experience put into my arm twice. Did you break it in two places? Three. Oh, see, this was two when Three, I was a kid. Yeah, nice. So. I, I did it, I did it, uh, just above the elbow, on the elbow, and below it elbow. And then wow. the bone went through the back. So there's two plates on the side with eight screws. I can see it. And I can yeah, see yeah. where the bone is there. Totally. It's all, it's, you know what, considering, and I don't know if you have joint issues or not, but I've been... No, there. it's just, this arm's just not as strong. And yeah. then I messed up my wrist snowboarding, so that kind of... You can really up. jack yourself up on a fucking... Sto- I ripped my ass cheeks open so hard on a fucking bail. Oh. Uh, I almost started crying. My hardest bail is we're on a snowboard. Yeah. Sure. Because, especially if you snowboard in Ontario, you're landing on ice. Most of the time. Well, we go so. up to Shodok with GT Snow Racers on sheer ice. There was no turning. You had to no, shoot it up like leap of faith, like a pool, like a snooker game. Yeah. <laughs> because you'd hang a ski up on a rail on the way down. It yep. was over. Brutal. And the security guards hated us. Yeah, that was. Uh, we used to take these three ski sleds that Canadians would use. It's kind of like a tricycle. Snow, uh, snowmobile sled and uh, go into these uh, golf courses and uh, ski resorts after hours and ride down sheer ice. I remember coming off some drops that were like six feet yep. on the sheer ice. I thought my kneecaps were going to fucking blow <laughs> clean off because you just say you be you get air on those things. Oh, it yeah. was like a long jump, but um, you know coming down on those things, uh, but. Um, Canadian winters, I haven't had to endure one in some time. Oh, they suck, man. I'm, I'm really yeah. hoping that I can get back. Uh, I'm either going to go to, uh, if they have their shit together in Hollywood, I'll go back. And uh, if not, I'm thinking maybe Vegas. Yeah. Uh, but I heard there's like vigilante shit going on in Vegas and stuff. You know what I mean? Like the amount of motorized... Like military vehicles and shit, and like where I used to sit in my Starbucks, at like these these places that were beaten past for me, and now are, are inhabited by tanks and machine guns. A military zone. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's totally crazy. Yeah, it, it's just, like I said it's just sad. I just hope that they get it together by mm-hmm. the time there's an election. I don't know. If I were you, I would plan not to go there until after November the fourth. No, and I just kind of see what happens. Yeah, like, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm. In a great position to make some uh, a few decisions. Yeah. So I have the luxury of um, having a, a Canadian passport and a green card and no wife and children. Yes. So my life can be very mobile very quickly. Yeah. And um, that is a... Uh, I, I'm not in a position where I have to be anywhere specifically other than safe. Yeah. And I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm in my hometown... These poor bastards here have been building a fucking wall in front of my window no, for days. Fortunately, need, your view would have been nicer a few months ago. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this, when I got here, this was a level hole. Yeah, I know. that They've been building it over the last so month. So they've, they've come up 
uh, two floors in the, in the last uh, 30 days. It's this whole neighborhood feel is going to feel so different. Like this skyscraper yeah. they're literally building here right next to. Oh, know, do you know how high this is going to be? It's going to be over 20 stories, I believe. No! It's a big building, man. Oh, I thought this was it. No, I it's going to be like. capping this off. No, it's going to be like a 20 story building. Wow. Man. And then across Kitty Corner wow. to that, another 20 odd story building is going up. I had a great up. view here. I was very lucky. I got a little video footage. <laughs> you know, the, the whole city, I watch the sun come up every day. And, uh, yeah. But these guys, as you can see by looking around, uh, this is a friend's place I rented, but the guys look in the window, see all these girls' dresses and kids' toys in here. <laughs> they don't know what the fuck. And then I'm doing kettlebell workouts <laughs> with a tutu on. <laughs> they don't know. These guys, they don't even make eye contact with no me anymore. Way. There's a whole bunch of construction <laughs> workers. Not to mention, I was leaning out the window smoking a joint, talking crazy shit about white girls in their 20s. Oh, and man. then realizing that... These guys, I'm threatening to kill people on the phone all the time. <laughs> and I'm smoking, and I can see the guys. He's working a, a steel cutter, and he stops the machine, he puts it down. He's like, The guy, come on, look at this guy. He's, t- he's plotting murders. He's like, What, eating them? Yeah. He's going to eat these people? That's why there's no eye contact anymore. <laughs> I know, and you know what? I, I, I would love to hear what they're saying about you, though, on their I lunch know, break. It's eh? funny. I know, it's funny. I can see some of the guys I think are hip. And I and I think um, uh, there's probably something because they played my the comedy now special in this country so many times. Like, yeah, I, I, like four or five times a year, like the same TV special from 2000. It's that it's 20 years old now. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Wow. Speaking of uh, 20 years old, um, I filmed a stand-up special in Denmark. And uh, it's coming out in uh, September. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. It's cool. And uh, it's filthy. It's perfect. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be uh, rad. So look for that. Uh, that's going to be coming out in the near future. I'm still in post-production with it. and um, Yeah, and I, I got a horror movie thing that's coming out this week, I think. Oh, yeah? So a few projects. Unfortunately, the only live gig that I have booked is tomorrow. I'm doing um, a live comedy show at the Christie Pits in Toronto, which is some sort of park. I've never been with an amphitheater or some sort of yeah, it's, thing. It's or... kind of a big valley of a park. Oh, is it's, that what it is? Yeah, that's why they call it the Christie Pits. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think there's some kind of a stage set yeah. up there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of those, um, every city has like one of those soap boxes where the local person can go up and speak their mind or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck. I haven't been on stage in like two months. Wow. Like that's that's like I've never had an absence of comedy in 20 plus years like this. This is retarded. So I don't even know. I'm confident enough that I'm going to be able to bring it. But um, as far as formulating ideas that are still fresh in my head, I haven't had a chance to do anything. And I got like a crazy forked tongue. Yeah. I say some pretty outrageous shit. So I don't want to step on any landmines and then be wicker man. To, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because you don't know how many people are going to be there. No, or and I don't know what be everyone's like. in a very strange, you know, it's going to be very hard to read that room and, and, yeah. and that, that space. You know, these, these people, um, everybody's going through some real shit right now, you know, in a very closed area. So as much as the world has a, a pulse to it... Um, our our worlds have been reduced to the people in our closest to us in our lives. Yeah, and uh, that sucks. <laughs> for, yeah, because no one wants to be around people you love for that long. <laughs> you don't. That's no, how you stay. That's how you love them. It, it's you know challenge. what I mean? Yeah. Like you you've been married. Yeah, you're married. So I'm married. married. <laughs> All my well, most of the guys I talk to are like former drug addicts <laughs> and alcoholics. You're one of the few people here who have actually been a stand up guy. Probably never done cocaine. Oh, yeah, I have. Oh, have you? Oh, it's a long time ago, but yeah. <laughs> and you know, you, you probably even could name who I did it was. So. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably was me. No. <laughs> Age, RJ. AJ. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Him. Well, actually, and also, I know you agree, a funny motherfucker. Oh, dude. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah like I would say of the, of the crew of people I grew up around, like you would be the one dude that always, but in a very chaotic way, 
I feel yeah, AJ's, it was chaos. AJ's just like always on. Like he's yeah. always got something to say. Yeah, that guy. he should have and, his. He should be a talk show host. Oh, he'd make a great talk show yeah. host. Yeah, and and he's like the and he's got a likable appeal. Like he could go into. Kind of reminds me of Jimmy Kimmel a bit. Yeah, yeah, I could say that. A little yeah. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, I could see a that. little more scathing than Jimmy. I'd say it could be a little angrier than Jimmy. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. But uh, AJ, you bring me. But yeah, like that guy could go, you know, call out Bingo at the old age home and have them all eaten out of his hand, and you know, and then go down the street to the, the yeah. hockey place or whatever, and there, make everybody laugh. So. There were some funny, funny kids. Yeah, there were some really characters. You know, everything from kids that were fucking mentally ill to like, <laughs> you know, of such a wide little rascals group of like rejects and yeah. all classes of life and social circles. It was such a, a weird uh, uh, thing at that time. And, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't skateboarding illegal in, in Hamilton for some time? Yeah, I'd say it was like 88 or 89. They made it, You couldn't skate on the sidewalk downtown. That's like they right. They could write you a ticket. Skateboarding's I, not a crime. I never knew anybody that did. I think I had a cop tell me to pick up my board once, but yeah. that was it. Yeah, um, they police it. You literally had to pick up your skateboard if you were in any downtown area. Yeah, yeah. For, for you, a couple of years. You had to watch it. That yeah. was a thing. I know it sucked, that was a man. thing. It sucked. It totally sucked. And I love nothing better than like getting out of Jackson Square and rolling my board down King Street through people just to see the yeah. look on their face. It was oh perfect, yeah, you well, know? because we were swarming. Yeah, because there were a hundred kids with skateboards. <laughs> yeah. They'd never seen. They go, we just empty out of a mall door. Yeah, and it's like the door wouldn't close for ten minutes. It'd just be kids firing out like yeah. at the Elva team of, of eighty eight. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? No one. Every kid stunk. And was just like pirates. That's exactly it. Was it was a very pirate mentality. I, I, I still, I went down there, I was saying with Dan uh, last week, and to look around Beasley and see all the uh, extra stuff that's been added to that. Oh, the park's amazing. place is fucking crazy. Yeah. It's so nice. It's yeah. so nice. And it's fun we to see. We tried. We, I remember petitions for years. Yeah. Can you fix the cracks? Yep. Nope. But it did kind of work because 92, they renovated the park. They put some stuff in. It wasn't I great. I moved to Vancouver in 93. Yeah. I was and, pissed. And, and it wasn't great, but I had, like, some of the best times of my life in that little park. And yeah. there was, like, I think at that time in Ontario, that was probably one of the very first municipal skate parks that was accessible, right? Yeah. So even from there, like, I met dudes from Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, Windsor area. They would day trip out here to go skate that park. So yeah, legendary. It, but it was really a cool. locals only, too. Yeah. You had to know somebody. You know, you had to pretty much own a skateboard shop in a different city. Yeah. Like, when the Suds guys came up from St. Catharines, everything was cool. Yeah. But then there were some, like, Toronto guys... I've seen a couple kids get cracked with skateboards for just not knowing where they were. It was yeah. Hamilton in the eighties. I know, and it yeah, and in the toughest neighborhood in Hamilton too, right? Yeah, like, it, was a, that's, it was not a place to. Sh- I've seen so many people get slapped in the face, bottles over the head. It was, and when the movie Kids came out, I was like. You you missed us by like five or ten years. I remember we all met up at Beasley, and I think we all were drinking, and then smoked dope, and went to go see kids at the Broadway on King William. Oh yeah, yeah. And we yeah. all walked out of there going, "That yeah, was a cool movie. It was kind of like us. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of all it felt yeah. like, right? It without totally without the it. HIV. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, that would have been a, a killer out of it. But those <laughs> kids were. I was like, how could those kids are so ugly and get so much pussy? Yeah, we never got any of that shit. We were Nothing. lepers. Girls no. hated us. If a girl showed up to Beasley, she was lost. She yeah. was trying to look for the gap or something yeah. like that. So. <laughs> They'd sit on the hill, look at all the dirty boys, not ignoring them because they'd just skate. Yeah. And they'd leave. Some would hang around. I lost my virginity there. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Not in that park, but uh, as a result of uh, a party that happened afterwards. Oh, okay. Wow. Good times. I don't know. I don't talk to that llama anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a weird thing. I was not planning at all. This girl, uh, I won't name her, but uh, she I think she took advantage of me. Nice. She deflowered me aggressively. 
<laughs> yeah, I still got the ripped underwear on a keychain. <laughs> Not mine, hers. Hers? Yeah. Because <laughs> I pulled them off and then I threw up on her tits. Uh. No, no, I didn't. I wanted to, though. But yeah, that was uh, that was a place where anything could happen. It was it had a very Bermuda Triangle. Uh, Google Beasley Park, Hamilton, 80s. And look at those photographs because that was yeah. our piss-soaked playground with broken glass do you remember uh, you'd have to wait for them to empty the pool? At oh, yeah, we'd stand around. And wait for it to dry. Yeah. And, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. We ripped out all the slides. People had to, uh, you know, we'd fuck up the drains. We were very crafty, you know. Yeah. We didn't want that water in there, so we would go over there and, and uh, fuck with the plumbing and shit. But, um, yeah, I don't know what, uh, uh, you know, I've been here back in Hamilton now for a month and um, reconnecting with some people family and some friends and um yeah we're gonna see what happens i'm gonna do a show tomorrow come tomorrow if you're in toronto to the christie pits uh i think it's at like seven but look at my instagram it's all the details for the shows are there and you're doing um I don't, I'm trying to like tell like what's coming up there's nothing coming up i know it's there's like- nothing coming up i can't even i can't even Pretend that something's coming up because there's nothing coming up except a new special and a film. But live stuff is where I thrive in. I enjoy it. I don't know. Have you been up to one of my live shows or maybe it's been 10, a while. 10 years my ago? My 40th birthday. Oh, shit. It's the last time. So a few years ago. Oh, yeah. That would have been 2013. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a great show, man. Like, was I hadn't here in Hamilton? Yeah, or? yeah. Absinthe. I hadn't seen. Oh. It was funny because I hadn't seen your your show in a while. Like, yeah. I was always, when you were in your amateur days of doing Yuck Yucks on amateur. Well, let's night, talk about we that. Would all, like, we don't try and go because, again, it's like the skateboarding connection, too. Like, you support your friends, right? Mm-hmm. And. Like, I always thought you were extremely brave to go get up and do what you do. Because, like, that's not easy. It's funny. It's okay to be funny around your friends, but to get up in front yeah. of a bunch of strangers to and be funny. Cross over to that's, that medium. That's, it to, was a brave step, man. It yeah. was. The, the, the hardest part was everything before the first time. Yeah. All the voices and procrastination and insecurities. and But I knew uh, immediately after the first show, which, what month are we in? June? Yeah. Oh, June 25th will be my 24th anniversary wow. of doing comedy. That's amazing, man. Yeah. It, um, uh, so, you know, the skateboarding kind of mentality, the DIY aspect of it is what I, you know, the punk rock element, the Henry Rollins approach to the arts. Yes. Uh, is kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. That was kind of a role model in as far as like, you are the business and uh, just be awesome at it, kind yeah. of thing. So, but um, and yeah, yeah, that's the skateboard I, mentality. Is like yeah. you just you just go for it, right? Yeah, you know, you have yeah. to have that, take that leap of faith on a board. Yeah, because you, comedy, most whatever. of us didn't have any uh, opportunities and stuff like that. Like there was no, um, it was that moment always. Yeah. There was no future thing. We were in a, in a in our own little kind of planet for for a few years straight. Yeah, but um. Now we're here in Hamilton. You're living. Are you living in Hamilton? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. said you used to live just around this area, but you're where are you up now? Yeah, we uh, we lived on. My wife and I bought a house on Pearl, 2002. Mm-hmm. We lived there for 12 years. So yeah, just a few blocks from here, and then uh, the neighborhood became gentrified and. We profited and moved uh, to the Westdale neighborhood, which is a little more... I love that neighborhood by the bean bar, or...? Um, yeah, I'm, like, two blocks from there. Oh, so, great. Yeah. Uh, do you go to the Burnt Tongue? Sometimes. Yeah, my, my buddy, John... Really, really nice soup. Great soup. Really nice soup. I'm actually... Next time I'm over there, because he's got this fucking new thing going. It's carrot cake with cream cheese ice cream. Oh, my God. And another piece of carrot cake. Oh, that's It's amazing. an ice cream sandwich, and uh, he says it's a little... Uh, it's delicious. That sounds amazing. So I we'll go and eat some ice cream sandwiches yeah. at the Burnt Tongue in Westdale Village. Shout out <laughs> to John McManus, <laughs> who used to be the head chef at the Vancouver Fish Market. That was another thing. When I left in 93 and moved out to Vancouver, I was like, that city was full of skate parks. Amazing yeah. skate parks. Yeah. Amazing. Not a quarter pipe and a basketball court. Huge flowing snake run all this concrete and and um yeah i was really angry when i got to vancouver i looked around in this 1993 
Vancouver, and I was like, wow, look at all this stuff to do here. Nothing's broken yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's yeah. no... There's no... It's kind of cool. You know, with the rain there, it really kind of kept that concrete and glass polished oh, constantly. Yeah. Spotless. Yeah. And then the mountains in the background and... Yeah, no, Vancouver's a beautiful city. It's... It, yeah, I would love to live out there yeah. if I could. That would One be, of the most expensive cities in the world, and that's is what I, I was told. And yeah. that's why I don't live there. <laughs> Way overpriced. Way overpriced. Way overpriced. I couldn't believe it. There's so many people I know that grew up in Vancouver that could barely afford to live there anymore. You know? oh, I don't see how you do it. It's outrageous. It. I mean, New York City prices for apartments. This apartment cost me nine cents a year. Perfect. This is in Hamilton, but I share it with 60 junkies <laughs> with all colitis. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, On Wednesdays, we have our poo party where everyone paints their own picture. <laughs> with their blood and semen um, and I'll tell you the, the local crazies will rival any LA mental people there's some epic they're, they're really doing a good show oh yeah here. the street theater in this town is, yeah. is top notch Hamilton have you have you hung out in Jackson Square much uh, I'm not sure I, what it's like I'm guessing everything's probably I walk all, all around stuff. yeah yeah I walk around the yeah, whole building because you see the crazy stuff oh it's great all I, the time. I have to be on guard Constantly, there's so. I would say, at least eighty percent of the population downtown is highly toxic, yeah, and out of control. Yeah, yeah. What was that zombie movie where they ran a mall? It wasn't Dawn of the Dead, was it? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was done. They, they should have just Canada. filmed it in Jackson Square. Yeah. Like, well, they did um, Resident Evil. Oh, that's right. They did. They do did that, that in Hamilton, Hamilton yeah. and also, uh, which I was hilarious because I'd never seen Silent Hill. And I'm watching Silent Hill, and it's the alleyway behind Cheapies. No way. And I'm going, I'm in the theater, because it's such a distinct little frame. Yeah, yeah. Like a part of the city, the the, 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 um, the fire escapes, and, yeah. and it's really grungy. It's always been full of puke and piss yeah. and rust. And yeah, it's like the Italian restaurant there, too. Has yeah. big mural. Yeah. So... That was in there, and I'm in the theater going, that's my hometown. And I'm pointing out like a, where people are being murdered in a post-apocalyptic city that never <laughs> existed. And I'm like, that's where I'm from. <laughs> They're like, shut up, asshole. It's the end of the world. It doesn't exist. No, no, I went to school over there. Uh, well, and then there's that Handmaid's Tale, which is yeah. a dystopian future, and they film it all here in Hamilton. Like, they film right across the street at the Scottish Rite for a lot of scenes. That's supposed to be the future? I don't know, but I'm just saying it's just Ooh. funny how Hamilton. You oh know, yeah, yeah. You don't even have to decorate Hamilton to, to look Hollywood. like a dystopian future. They're making you know? more TV productions in my hometown <laughs> I know. than they did 20 years ago. In I probably have more of a chance of being cast in a film or a TV show by living in Hamilton here now. You probably could. Yeah, <gasps> I gotta get. I haven't had an agent in ever because I hate acting. Uh, it's terrible. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, it's hard. Unless you really practice it. It's a uh, craft it's, on its own. Oh, right? most definitely. Most definitely. So you quit skateboarding. You didn't quit skateboarding. You, you had to acquire a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't play that Michael J. Fox Back to the Future shit anymore. <laughs> so 93, you, you and your missus buy a house over here. Oh, two, 2002. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, 93. So I come back. Uh, uh, November ninety six. Yeah, I make my I return. Your back. Yeah. yeah, and then a um, couple years, and then I moved to Toronto. I think ninety nine or yeah, something I like that. Remember that? And then uh, you started hanging out with your famous friends in Toronto. Oh, famous friends <laughs> who Mike Bullard and I. Yeah, like that guy was Canadian famous at that time. He hated me. <laughs> he hated me. I remember that. I remember you did his show and twice. I I said, how did that he, go? And you were like, it was eh. fine. Yeah, no, I just felt like I was completely alienated. I was this kid with pink hair from Hamilton. Yeah. And he was a... Uh, he was a former cop. Wasn't yeah, he? that's what it was. It was never going to mix. Never. It was never going to mix. No. If you are a, a, a person of authority in a corporate world, I am nothing for you. No. Except fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. And the, when, when people are uh, tuned into that kind of uh, interaction as a, a Gestapo type character, yeah. I, uh, they smell my, my dis... dis uh, I don't have any... Uh, no, it's all fuck yous from me. Pretty much. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yeah, 96... 
Or no, then what happens? So let's jump up to like 99. Yeah. You get married. Are you married with children then? No, I was like living in, I actually was leaving, I was living in Stony Creek in 99, renting a townhouse with uh, this guy, Brian Hick. He was an old Stony Creek skater in this other Yeah, I think I know, I know. We had a big, one of those big townhouses that they built by Fruitland Road down by the water. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, it was like a nice, nice night. Yeah. All, my, all my neighbors had freaking BMWs and yeah. shit like that. They had the little and makeshift fake lake. There's the three, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and there's the three of us so in, this, in this rental property. And, in we, your, in your and we had a pinball. We had, uh, no, I was in my mid twenties. Oh, I had so it's a, perfect. I had a. You had a yacht club <laughs> with a bunch of fun. What do you weekend at Bernie's every it, weekend? Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so and much we, fun. I wish we I had drank. A, we had a pinball machine in the front living room that overlooked the front window, and it was uh, a nineteen eighties pinball machine called Raven, and it was yeah. like a chick dressed up like Rambo holding a machine gun. Mm-hmm. Just awful picture. Was and it that's a photograph we, with paint behind it? Like, did she it was, look like a real girl? Or yeah, no, no. It was like a photograph, I think. But yeah, Those are dude, the best. <laughs> the most hilarious pinball machine in the front window, and our neighbors hated us. They were just like... Because we had, like, two huge yeah. sound systems in the yeah. house and, like, they you know, the, paper walls. They're and, trying uh, to raise a family. Oh, yeah. They hated us, man. What it were was their crazy. jobs? Were they doctors or something? I think the one guy was an engineer. Yeah. Yeah, he was awful. That guy's Milo, not Milo be Rad. off a toilet. Milo Rad. That was his name. He hated us. Eastern European, Russian. Dude. Yeah, yeah. And he told me he was going to bring all his freaking black belt buddies in. Like, you threatening me? Like, it, yeah. was, it was crazy, man. So Yeah. But, yeah, I, did, I lived there, and then I lived down... Um, at Hess and Herkimer in 2000. Uh, with, that sounds uh, terribly dangerous. No, it wasn't. Herkimer's, it Herkimer's, Herkimer's, Herkimer's pretty far south. Yeah, okay. it was okay. I had a really tiny little apartment, and uh, there was like three black dudes that lived below me, and the one guy was a DJ. So 4 o'clock every day, my floor was shaking. Like, my furniture was moving. I hope he was in the drum and bass. Uh, oh, dude, it was so loud. His name was Dwayne. Good, good guy, though, man. Cool as shit. So, yeah, he used to smoke His weed. taste in music sucked, though. Do so, man, why can't he just bl- like blare like string instruments, yeah. like a harp? No one ever blows a harp. And uh, Manny was my roommate there for a bit. I remember ah, that. yeah. So Manny I haven't Chain, seen him so. in there ever. Is he still in the city? Or? He's in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. He, he's an artist in Toronto. Yeah. And, yeah, he's doing good, man. I think he's doing okay. His paintings are amazing, man. Yeah, he has this kind of like a huts. These little yeah, finely like detailed kind of like shanty town type yeah, places. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they remind me of uh, the, like the townships in South Africa, but I think it's more like Asia. They look like they're um, uh, uh, like places I stayed in Thailand. Yeah, yeah, that's what I. You know, with salamanders inside the showers and stuff. I know he's visited over there, so I think maybe he's, you know, obviously had an impression on it. And yeah. I don't know if he brought some from, of that back. Paints from photograph or what, but yeah, the paintings are beautiful, man. They're, they're incredible. Yeah, a lot of the kids, you know, you, no, you're not surprised as I'm not. Like, there's so many kids that were got into the arts that were like really good artists at the pool. Like, some kids would really paint some crazy pieces and yeah. stuff down there. And that was kind of what I wanted to do when I was younger. I wanted to be a graphic designer. I went to went to Sheridan, didn't really love it. I just yeah. I think it was the school side of it. And being judged, I think I had a hard time with. That was just my own thing. And then sure. I went and got a job at the factory that my dad worked at. But and then what you know, factory? It's, uh, it was called Eaton back in the day. It's at Parkdale near Burlington Street. Yeah. So yeah, I started That's working like there. That's like Blade Runner down there. Oh yeah, it totally is. It's totally apocalyptic looking, right? It's the crazy. Yeah. Well, describe the, the the listeners what. Well, there's like Columbia Chemical down it's, there, it's and you know, steel. Yeah, and then the fast goes a little bit to yeah. the west, so there's flames shooting out of these buildings. I'm, it's like the opening to Blade Runner. Yeah. That's kind of what it reminds yeah. me of. Right? It totally looks like the opening of Blade Runner. Yeah. There's flames shooting like 50 feet in the air all See, day. And as I said, like that, that was my impression of the city of industry, which is like just between LA and. Long Beach. Mm-hmm. I remember driving through there. I'm like, oh, this looks like Burlington Street yeah. in Hamilton, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like refineries and shit like that. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I, and yeah, except there, there's a little more <laughs> away from the population a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. Hamilton, it's like I can walk to any well, toxic yeah. waste dump. Those houses behind the old Center Mall, like <sighs> literally, DeFasco is over top of their houses. Like it's crazy, man. I don't know how. I and do. dirt on everything. Oh it's yeah, it's dirty, dirty. Just parking my car there. Yeah. It's like a layer of dirt on the end of the day it's it's crazy this city has uh come up and gone down all in one breath 
It's yeah. I think Hamilton's still trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, I think our city council is really hurting it. There's a, like I think they're really split. There's some progressive people that want to do make the city better. Then there's others that are like, no, nah, I like it the way it was in '93. Yeah. So, but that's the we Hamilton struggle with mental- it. mentality. I always found that people just want to do the less is more. Yeah. They just figure, I'll just do the minimum. Everybody just wants to do the minimum because the city has such an abundant uh, resources and landscape. Yeah. People are just squatting on their own time and resources. Some ways, yeah. But I think, like, you know, the thing that's really changed the last 20 years is, like, I think the creative industries are really thriving in Hamilton. Like, music, yeah. music's done well. Um, the Sonic Onion guys, yeah. I knew those guys back back in 93. Yeah, yeah. I just, try to get they a, literally a deal with them. They literally started it out of their basement, and you know that DIY thing that it really worked well for them. And th- those guys worked their asses off. But I they mean, did now they sub pop kind of business model at yeah, that time. Yeah, but then it grew and they had um, Frank Black on their label for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. I think that they were really just about like artists that they liked, and if they could help, you know, usually handle Canadian territory distribution. That's yeah. what they did, and yeah, it worked out okay. Now they're like a real estate holding company. Like they bought a really? lot. They bought a lot of buildings in downtown Hamilton and fixed them up. Wow. And uh, you know, even some of them are space. The one is Mills Hardware. Like it's a space that they do comedy shows, music. It's just a music or just a venue that people can go and use. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was them. Like they did that. Like so, they're giving back to the community and making you know the creative community yeah. thrive in a sense, right? Just the other day, I'd seen a um, the P four parking lot. They're turning into a music venue. Yeah, on the on the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. and and yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, but I think every level they're going to do some sort of music thing. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. Is it the impression but I got? But it's that's great though. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where one of the things that I take pride in Hamilton is that we have that DIY. You know, nobody's going to do it, come in and do it for us. We're not waiting for a Toronto promoter to come in and it's do that. To get people on board causes here. Yeah, you got to kind of do everything yourself yeah. just to get it off the ground. But at least it's it's real then. You know what I mean? It's not like force fed to people. It's mm-hmm. like people are generally supportive because they're like, oh yeah, man, like I know somebody who's doing something, or they're playing a gig on the top of the freaking parking hard. lot. Yeah. People will show up. You know? Yes. So. It's hard to uh, get people to do things in this city. I've found. Yeah. But um, I'm around. But we'll we'll hang out. You For know. Sure. What do you, you got shows coming up? <laughs> <laughs> ah, come and see my show tomorrow at the Christie Pits. Um, yeah, I'm going to see what happens over the next couple of months, but um, I might have to go up to, uh, not have to. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, all of August, I might go up and, uh, or I am, I'm going to go build log homes. Oh, really? With a buddy of mine from Parkview. Whereabouts? Uh, near Algonquin Park. Oh, wow. That's uh, beautiful up there. Uh, something River. What's it called? Anyway, near North Log Homes. Oh, really? Eh? My high school buddy is up there, and this is a seasonal thing, clearly, I guess. And I said, fuck it. I'm going to go and do some real Canadian shit. Yeah. And I'm. they call me the Log Father. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought I, Paul, shit, I thought Paul I shit, called you that. I shit everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fought many a rooster tail. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know what's what else to say other than that um, we're all here and we're all uh, making something happen. And um, thanks for listening, everybody. You sure you don't have any shows coming up? No shows. We'll go see some bands while I'm in town. That would be sweet. That would be sweet, right? Oh, yeah. I sure. think so. There, there's definitely going to be some live music be, between now and uh, and November. Yeah. There's got to be. I'll start a band myself. <laughs> Tommy and the Tambourines. Uh, Richie, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Jay. Was, and awesome. uh, I'd say give out your social media, but you trust me. Anybody who's listening to that show, you don't want them looking for you. <laughs> you don't want them trolling? No, no. <laughs> You'll, you'll see terrible videos and pictures constantly. I'm bombarded <laughs> by these animals. They send me the most vile, terrible things. I'm trying to get the stuff I have in out. Yeah, it just keeps I, on yeah they're double parking me with beheadings and skinless uh, cats and all kinds of crazy shit. Anyway, I come because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for listening to the show, everybody. And uh, go to jasonrouse.com and you can find this on uh, all those platforms. And um, that's about it for now. 
Bye. I don't care what society thinks. Good or nothing anyway.